Hi everyone, I'm Clayton Davis, uh, Film Awards Editor at Variety here with the Middleburg Film Festival doing a Q&A uh, after Sound of Metal with director Darius Martyr, writer-director Darius Martyr, uh, star Riz Ahmed, Wade Riz, and then uh, and sound editor uh, Nicola Becker. Uh, first of all, thank you for being here today, guys, or here in this virtual setting. This is a weird time. Um, <laughs> a pleasure. Uh, Darius, I have, to, I have to actually let you start because you, you were saying something profound before we actually got into it. Uh, I doubt that. What, 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 a, what a time for this film to kind of come to us and exist where we're trapped in a different way than Riz's character in, in the film. I wanted you to share a little bit about that. It is really interesting. I mean, it, it, it keeps occurring to me as I talk about the film. And obviously, we, I mean, man, we, we just never know where we're heading in life, do we? And, and who could have imagined that the world would shift? It so does parallel Ruben's journey. And, you know, you're, you're in this life, you're in this identity, all of the trappings of it, all of the things you think life is about, and then it changes. And you're left to deal with how you respond to that change. And I think what's so amazing about this pandemic and this time is that it really does highlight how people's ability or inability to do that and, mm -hmm. and to react to something that has no compassion or empathy. It simply just is. This is a pandemic. And how do you react to it? Do you accept it? Do you resist it? And the ultimate thing that we are all having to do collectively as a globe, which is totally weird, is deal with ourselves. Mm. Riz, and, Riz, yeah. oh, sorry. Hey, no, no, no. Riz, Riz, yeah, Riz, would you say that, like, <laughs> did this film weirdly kind of prepare you for this time then? Uh, if, yeah, if, for sure. I mean, I kind of wrote about it a little bit um, recently in, in, in an article about the pandemic. And it's interesting because, just as you said, Ruben's journey does mirror the one that a lot of us have been going through during this pandemic and also us as a society in that Ruben's a workaholic. You know, Ruben is someone who defines himself through his productivity, the role he plays, the contribution he makes. And that is how we're conditioned, obviously, in our society as well. You know, um, and suddenly this workaholic individual or our workaholic culture is chasing these external things and this external approval um, is struck by a health crisis and that health crisis lands Ruben and it's landed us in this kind of extended purgatory in this lockdown where we're forced to sit with ourselves and face ourselves and go on an inward journey and reassess what really matters and what's really important. So I think it is kind of uncanny. Um, and I hope, you know, ultimately that it allows the film to resonate, you know, um, with, with people in an, in a in a profound way, I mean, I think that the script that Darius has put together and the way that the film is made, Ruben is already going on quite a universal journey. But hopefully, this is something that you know kind of even amplifies its re relatability. Uh, uh, Nicola, uh, it's very, you know, I, I'm here at, when I'm working at Variety. Uh, one thing I always really try to stress is I want people to be able to talk about sound mixers in the same or sound designers, sound artists in the same breadth and fashion that they can with like A-list celebrities. Cause you guys are just as important as anybody else that works on a film. And you've worked on over a hundred, including gravity arrival, like big, big movies, not like, you know, uh, you know, and, and this film lives and dies by its sound work. Like, and a lot of this can't be experienced on the big screen right now. Um, how, when you're, when you're putting this together, I guess, as, as you was work, were you, as you were working with Darius, were you mindful of like a viewing at home versus a viewing on a big screen movie theater? Oh, I never, I mean, I never thought about it because uh, I think uh, we, we, we finished the film quite uh, like some months ago. So I'm not, uh, I was not, uh, I'm not, I was not thinking about that, but uh, of course I, I would prefer for the people to see it uh, on, on big theater, but uh, I think, I think uh, what is important for me is like, because the, the, the sound, the sound part is, is, is not something like, 
it's rewritten and it's it's something which is meaning something very it's very important what 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 sound says in the film so i don't think it's depend so much about the system like if it's like a big stereo system or like a five plus one or you know i think you can you can you can get what's happening even in in in, in mono version in a small you know and, and that also was what what is so important for me to be able to to have to because i had the chance to be able to work on this film is because it's 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 written like that you know so it's not something you have to find uh, uh you know like uh, you have to be clever to find a way to 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 show that sound is amazing or whatever you know it's 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 and also that's why i think we 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 spend a lot of time to make something very simple but as you know simple things are the harder hardest to 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 to, to do you know so so I, I I really think that uh I, I'm very proud about this film because I think uh it's it's not it's it's not the sound is great not in a technical aspect, you know, but in in, in the way it's written and the way it's 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 bring you to the to the to the core of the film, you know, to the to the you know? Yeah. Uh, I understand that. Uh, it's, it's, it's great that you bring up the story. Uh, Darius, as you were writing, you know, the script, did you already know and have in your head how you wanted to make it, that you wanted us to be in Ruben's head, like, as he's losing his his hearing? I did, yeah. You did that right away? I mean... You know, you do in the in the in the limited way that you can know that, but it it, it literally is in the script, and yeah. and yeah, I always did. It was a, it was something that I was excited about right from the beginning, um, but but that incredibly um, committed first person perspective took some time to develop. Oh. You know, right in the beginning, it maybe had a slightly more omniscient uh, framework. It was it was cross cutting. I. I I wrote deep into Lou's story. I actually wrote all of Lou's story going to uh, Paris. And there was a time period where I actually wanted to shoot it, you know, as a set, as, a, as own movie. So that was it, but, but ultimately it became an utterly committed first person perspective. And that was always the intentionality there. Well, well I mean, like if I can say something what was very specific that uh, normally as a sound designer start to work you know, after the shooting or some, even after the picture editing. And, uh, you know, uh, Darius called me like one year before he started to shoot. And then we spent time together and we, we spoke, we saw films, we, 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 we listened to music, we, you know, and, and the first time he called me, he said like, you know, you, you, I think you should work on this film. You know, because it's 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 going to be something very spe specific and and consistent about sound. You know, what 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 song what song was it that made you say yes though? Because you had a bit, if you're listening to music, what was the number he threw at you? Then he asked. I mean, that's a good that's a good question. I know, right? I, want, I, want I like I like that question. Yeah. No, but but actually, I show I think I show you the the instrument I was playing with, you know, which are like this weird instrument for, uh, which have been developed for disabled people, you know, which are like made of metal. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, what was very strong on the process of working with Darius that we had so much in common and it was like so much secret connection, you know, it was, it was, it was, uh, I mean, this film has also uh, a link with Gurdjieff, the guru, and I w at this time where he called me, I was working, with, uh, uh, with a project about Rene Domal, which is a poet, which we also have been influenced with Gorge. I mean, and so on. Each time it was like every, it seems like everything was linked. Was you connected, know? yeah. Yeah, it was connected, sorry. Yeah, to, to, so, so it was a bit like uh, strange, you know, even sometimes, you know. It was. Um, uh, uh, Riz, uh, you, you've had a very, very uh, profound career. Uh, we've we've enjoyed a lot of your works, including you know, uh, Nightcrawler, uh, The Night of, you know, all, all you're like all over in terms of like what you bring to your roles. What was different about this one that about your approach to it to the character and the way you delivered? I think that this does feel different for me um, in many ways. 
Um, and, and I think, in a way, I, I don't know, I just do feel, of course I'm biased, but I do feel like there's something quite unique about this film. You know, and I think part of that is about the process of making it, part of it is about, I mean, from everything, from, you know, listening to Nicola talk about the sound, for example, it is just so committed. I feel like Darius just led by example and invited us all to just commit and to work in ways that we hadn't worked before to try and make something that, you know, um, maybe was a little bit different to anything any of us had seen before. And so, you know, Nicola did that with the sound, you know, after every take, he'd come up to me with his, I don't know what that was, that thing, that kind of object from the future that you found <laughs> somewhere and put against my chest and made me like... Uh, yeah, it was, it was a kind of, of, of home DIY stethoscope microphone with, you know, like uh, yeah. something like that. He made a kind of, yeah, he made a kind of homemade <laughs> Robocop kind of thing. <laughs> and put it against my chest every after every take and would ask me to swallow and breathe and blink so that what we what you have on the soundscape of this film is a large part of it is constructed from Ruben's internal audio landscape as his hearing diminishes externally you start to develop more vibrational internal hearing of your own bodily processes which of course intensifies your state your emotional state because what you are you're in a feedback loop of sitting in yourself and just seeing that process and seeing how committed that was, seeing the commitment um, you know, of, of, our, of our camera team and saying, actually, we're gonna shoot on film. This is, we don't have a lot of money. We've got like four or four and a half weeks to shoot this movie. We're gonna do two takes for every setup. Let's go. It really kind of, um, I think, you know, encouraged everyone to try and go the extra mile. And, and for me, I guess, it was the seven, seven month process of, learning to play the drums and learning American Sign Language. Wait, you, wait you, you didn't know how to play drums before? No, no. I not only did Riz not know how to play drums before, he had never held a drumstick. I mean, I was with you the first time you right. held a drumstick. And it, it was hilarious yeah. because the first time you saw me ever even try and hold a drumstick stick and play the drums, you immediately understood a little bit about my personality because I, I did. tried to play the drums and then was immediately angry that I couldn't play the drums. <laughs> Um, Riz, 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 Riz thinks he's like joking. a, you know that scene in, in the Matrix when when you know Keanu downloads Kung Fu. Yeah, you know that's how Riz. That's how Riz <laughs> is so. Brilliant. I was like, why is not this? Riz is so brilliant and used to things being easy oh, that he was just like, it was literally that. like download <laughs> drums, and it didn't, you just like it didn't download, and you were like, how dare you? So, uh, I was like, Shh, doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. No, it, it, it was just because I just. I don't know. I, I just uh, I just wanted to just give everything. I wanted to do it justice. So so that was the big um, that was a big difference. I'd say it was two big differences for me. One was the preparation of learning sign language and learning the drums. It was a daunting and challenging process, but also a tremendous gift, really enriching for, for me. Yeah. My drum teacher Guy Licata, my sign instructor Jeremy Stone, who both become friends, um, really opened me up in new ways, forcing me to communicate non-verbally through drumming, through sign language. Mm -hmm opened me up as an actor, as a human being, um, in, in all kinds of inarticulable ways um, to go through that. But I guess the other um, way in which this felt different to me and a different way of approaching a role was just how much of myself I was allowed to bring to this. And um, it sounds like a strange thing to say because in many ways I think Ruben's probably the furthest from me on paper of, of any character I might have played and yet, um, I think Darius had put so much of himself into this role in, in writing this character and so much of his himself in, in kind of mounting this film against all the odds. I can tell you endless stories about this film almost falling apart on the day before shooting or even, you know, just constant and just seeing how much everyone was putting into it. It actually made me think, okay, yeah, I've done all this learning other stuff, but I've got to show up in a really in a really personal way. And so um, it felt different because, I don't know, I guess we just all put so much of ourselves into it. Yeah. Uh, Riz, I, I was giving you, I was trying to give you an opportunity here to be honest and you didn't bring it up this time. We've spoken before. Darius, we'll tell the truth now. You also brought the blonde hair to the role and I thought you were gonna admit it here and you didn't. You, that was oh, your the blonde oh, hair. You, I mean, you yeah, did you know, bring the blonde uh -huh. hair. Uh-huh. 
Come on. Interesting because, listen, I but mean... This was an argument before. We've spoken about this before. Yeah, yeah. I think 90% of this film hinges on the blonde hair. No. I'd like to take credit. Because no. be like, he wanted to be Darius. It was, it was being him. That's what it was. I was like, how can I be more... De oh, okay. Ah, there oh. you go. I'll head off and I'll come back and I'll be like... Okay. And somehow Darius was like, in for some strange reason I, I like you I more feel blind. i look more like gary it's great <laughs> no it was such a it was such a brave choice nice it was yeah. such a brave choice it was like it, it's so interesting because it was it man it was an awesome choice and it's, and it's yeah. interesting because you know the his his journey of in appearance we were just talking about this previously it is a big part of his emotional journey in the film his emotional journey is one about kind of living within his constructed identity and persona mm -hmm. as punk drummer and boyfriend to Lou and then mm -hmm. it all getting stripped away when he loses his hearing and having to accept himself at his core yeah. and so you know visually in the movie you start off with this guy with his dyed blonde hair he's behind his fortress of the drums and he may be bare chested but he's covered and adorned in all these tattoos that try and you know constructing his identity and communicating who he is to you but at the end of the film you know, he's kind of in his natural state and he's all covered up, but he's probably more naked than ever. So it is, it was an important part of that journey. And I don't know, I'm, yeah, it, it just felt like a thing to try. And it was one of those things where hopefully we, this works. And when we did it, it was like, I think this, this means something, you know. Yeah. It, it's it totally does work. Uh, yeah, listen, you, you do a great job, uh, uh, Nikolai. I have to I have to come back to the to the machine on the chest. They, evidently, getting Riz ready for Terminator Nine. You know that next big <laughs> role. Is. Um, what what were you looking for uh, there, and how? Like, listen, because I've had a lot of conversations with you know casual moviegoers, and they're they're like you know, we talk about sound, and I'm like you know that lives and breathes by the sounds. Like I can't really tell like what a design is or a mix or an edit or what, like to, what, how did those machine, how did that, that machine help in constructing the, the, the design aspect of it? Uh, first of all, I think that uh, it was very interesting also maybe for everybody to understand that uh, uh, the sound is going through the body you know, and like the body is actually, because there is like storytelling, there is like, but the engagement of the body in the film, you know, is so important, I think. So to be able to put uh, his in a situation where he don't have only to think about his, his, what, his role, but also to feel, you know, things, to, 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 to think about sound and to, to also, because Darius actually, uh, create also a device for him to be able to simulate, you know, the lose of hearing loss, you know. So it was, it, it, it's also like to create a memory, you know, kind of body memory of that, you know. And, and I think it's very important because it's, it's like body is not, is not lying, you know. So it was also to, to create something very, very deep and strong, you know. I think it's... it's and also Nicola does something unusual. At um, as far as sound goes, number one, to have a sound designer even on set is rare. You yeah. know, usually that's a post consideration. And, and, and Nicola, it was very important Nicola was on set because, you know, he was approaching sound in ways that are very unusual with multi-directional mics, with mics underwater and compressor mics and condenser mics. And, and then this experience on, on Riz, and that was all important to the post process. And it was all part of that all that's in the movie. And, but also, uh, you know, the, the um, experience in sound in the movie plays like uh, as a meta experience, you know, so everything that you're going through in the movie, we end up hearing as an audience at the end, you know, so that, I think that's what you're talking about, that physical experience exactly. that exactly. Is, is actually reflected because in the sound design. Oh, but I was going to say you make your own library of sounds. Yes, that's so, also because yeah. also that's very natural for me because I'm working only with the sound I'm recording. You know, I'm not able to, it's, it's like, it's the same for a director. Mm -hmm. If he has to shoot a shot of a train, the producer will not say, oh, but we have train sound, uh, train shots. You don't need to- Stock footage, shot. right. Yeah, 
you know so so for me it's the same you know i i my library need to be like uh, original for each movie I, I, I and also for me so it means that when i work with my sound it's al always linked to my memory you know because i've recorded this in that moment you know i i i, I you know so it's 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 a question of it, everything is linked with my memory and also linked with mood you know so so for me, it's, it's a, this physical approach is very, very important. It's also the way I'm actually working. Yeah, and Clayton, we were together, you know, in post for so many me weeks and months. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, how, I mean, how, I, mean, how I, mean I, I want to say something also very unusual that we, I, I, we it's not like I did the, the sound, we did the sound actually. And, 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 and you know, that's something we, we when we start to work on on the project, we say like, okay, we should do the sound together. And but one week we were all the time together. So I, I would say that. I mean, I was an extension, <laughs> a, a sonic extension to the to 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 uh, Darius' brain, you know. So I, mm -hmm. I, I I bring I bring my uh, experience, I bring my my ideas, but I think we really like. Uh, so to, you know, construct it, construct it like that, you know. So it's it's we really like work together. You know? That you know? process was immeasurably important, not just in terms of sound, but also picture editing. Because I would, I actually, we had a very unusual process where I came in the middle of editing the film with our wonderful editor uh, Mikkel, who's Danish. But I would come myself to Paris and work with Nicola so that we could start actually cutting picture and working sound design simultaneously because there's a chicken and an egg in this movie. You can't cut without sound and you can't do sound without picture. So we so actually would come with a laptop, sit next to Nicola in a, on a soundstage and be cutting as Nicola was creating something and then go back to Miko. And our, our process was crazy. It was just nuts. And that's not even, we, we, were, we were doing post for 23 weeks on just sound. And that doesn't even include those experiences where I would come and work with you during cutting. Um, it, was a, it was a really intensive and absolutely uh, exhilarating experience. Wow, all right, awesome. Um, also, and, and also what was <laughs> extremely important, I think, and I think it's, uh, we all maybe feel that, it's like this film was, was a, a journey. You know, it was, it was like a journey for everybody. You know, it was like a really like strong journey. So, so we all participate to that, you know, and, 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 and also we really, so, I mean, for me, it's important that working on a film is becoming a, a journey, you know, and, and, we, and, and Darius had that also in mind, you know. So the process, we, the way also we work, we start in Paris and we move to, to LA, in a music studio, then for, for the, you know, and then after we move to, to Mexico in the, in, in the mountain to mix in the silence of the mountain. But also, you know, everything was like the way we were working also, everything was linked to the story. Mm -hmm. An experience, you know? so, right. So, so it was very special, you know, very, yeah. very specific and, and very, I mean, it never happened. Mm -hmm. you know? Uh, yeah. Can I just add to that? I think sure, it's, it's kind of like part of this overall approach, I think, the of, yes, number one, we're going to go on this journey together. But we're going to go on a journey for real. Like, we're not going to fake it. You know, the same way that you're saying, Nicola, yeah. it's like, um, I'm not going to just kind of grab stock audio files of, you know, what the inside of someone's skull feels like. I'm going to take the recordings from the film set, from, the, from my body, and you're going to construct something from that. In, in the same way, it's like when we're doing the gigs, for example, that was like one of the most terrifying things. Like, okay, we're going to have to do this gig at some point, Olivia and I. And I had seven months to prepare. Olivia had two. Um, you know, I had to learn the drums and she had to learn how to kind of play the guitar and use loop pedals and scream. And Darius, She's looping in real time, by the way. Yeah. What, you, what, what is all this? I, I mean, too, am, am I just that's what I'm saying is that Darius didn't want to, he, he was just like, let's just not fake it. Let's huh. just do it. We'll just and, and just start by, with drums and guitar, like in in record time. I, well, I don't know about that, but it's just, but it's, <laughs> but, it's but it it, it it invigorates the whole creative process yeah. in a way that you cannot fake because you are not faking it. Yeah. And similarly, it's like okay, if you're having scenes where you are signing with the deaf community, 
you better know sign language by that point in the shoot yeah. so you guys can riff and talk and we're going to hire a real nightclub and this is a real audience and you guys are playing a gig and so something about that thing of like we're not going to fake anything in this movie <laughs> um, allowed us to really kind of go on a journey um and it sounds it sounds strange because you'd think that everyone would always want to make movies like that but it's it's hard and it's scary oh, it, yeah so, uh, I mean, I mean, if, you do, if you do such a film 99 percent of the producer and the director will, will say like okay we're gonna do this we're gonna start with a playback you know so don't worry you know <laughs> and and it was exactly the opposite what we did and and and, and we did for, i mean like darius knew that we're gonna we, we have to do it because if the people believe at the first sequence you know like they're playing and you have no doubt about it it's like a diegetic sound you know you will believe everything you know and it was it was like the seminal uh you know uh, that's a really great out. point nicola that's exactly no? right it's a yeah. language yeah and i was gonna, i was gonna say uh there so you know we, we've spoken before and i and i i i I joke, but mean a hundred percent when I say it that you're like Papa Darius to your 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 cast, your crew. Like you are like you, like I've I've met a, a, quite a bit of directors over the years, and you it it pours out of you that you like love everyone on your set and your entire crew, and you're so authentic in what you brought to the film, uh, even utilizing uh, Chelsea and Shaheem, who are people from the deaf community to to be be in this film um you really wanted that authenticity how did that feel to be able to i mean was it was it just always something you knew and oh yeah yeah i mean that's as obvious to me as as uh i mean look i i'm i'm repul one of the reasons i wanted to, to put music in the film is because i hate music in films i fucking hate fake do you really i hate fake music like oh, when, fake you, music. Okay. when you see musicians faking it it's mm -hmm. it is so repulsive to me mm -hmm. i can't yeah it's so <laughs> awful. so i was like you know excited to to do it and just and and not about it being the best the most perfectly played music of all time or anything but just being real the idea that something more repulsive to me than uh fake music would be fake deaf people I mean, that's that's repulsive and insulting on so many levels, and it would never occur to me ever. I mean, I, 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 I'm in a million years, I wouldn't make that movie. So, but but interestingly, um, uh, the the journey to to make this film in an authentic way is not a simple one, and uh, you know there was a lot of pressure uh, put on to cast other people that weren't deaf, and um, because it's extremely hard to to uh finance films and you know but never it was never a question and and you know we were so blessed to have yes you, you, everyone that's you know there's a very large deaf cast and lauren ridloff is just exceptional to be around and um she's such an incredible energy on set and you know m much of much of the details uh in the movie um that have to do with deaf culture i would say almost all of the details came right from the deaf community. They're not things that I wrote. They're not things that I kind of thought up as nifty details in my mind. The, the deaf community represents itself in this movie. And, and Ruben visits that culture. And we visit, as hearing people in the movie, we visit that culture, but the film doesn't represent that culture. It, it just visits. Good. All right. Well, Riz, you know what that tells me? If he ever makes the remake of Amadeus, you better start getting ready to learn some uh, Beethoven and stuff, man, because he's gonna. Oh gonna man, you you'd be that. a great, you'd be a great Amadeus, Riz. Yeah, it'd be awesome, actually. Actually, I just said it. And I was like, wait, I kind of like the sound. I of like it. the idea of that. Yeah. yeah. Or maybe Salieri. Yeah. It could just it's be a little more awesome. evil. All right. Uh, fi final question for you guys. Um, you know, one thing I've been arguing with the world for the past six or seven months, and will continue for the next six and seven months after this, is that there are films this year. People, you know, movie theaters are obviously closed, um, but there's still movies, and people are like, you know, cancel the year, there's no movies, but there are plenty, and I'm always telling people, expand your cinematic palettes, you know, go discover something. Um, what are you 
and all of you can answer this. What what is the one thing you want people to take away from from this film that maybe have never seen like a, a independent film like this before that are used mm. to you know sitting in a theater in their reclined chairs, leather seats, you know, sticky floors, and then taking it all in. What do you want people to to take from this? Maybe maybe I can say something like because you know uh, in in uh, in Europe I I I. I I, I did film like Lion or, or, or you know, uh, this kind of film, which were kind of, of, of a, 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 a link between uh, to European cinema to American cinema, you know? Mm. And, and I would say that uh, for me, uh, and it normally never happened in the opposite way, you know? It's, it's always like a European director who dream about doing a film in, in the US, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and, and in a way, even in the film is shot in the US, the fact that there's a, the, a lot of members of, of the team are, are from Europe. For me, Darius did a bit the opposite. He tried to find a kind of interesting uh, mix, not mix because I don't like the idea of mix, but to, to question that, you know? Because uh, you, you, you can ask you the question why there is like Riz, uh, the DOP is from Holland, you know, uh, I'm from France, you know, and, and the producer was also from France. So I think he was like questioning that, you know, also maybe, I don't know if you, it was, it was really like, but for me, that's very, very the first film, I, I, American film, I see like that, which is try to, to, to question that. Mm. I think that's true. I think it, it, it uh, you know, m I'm, I'm probably more influenced by, uh, foreign films than I am by American films. Um, mm -hmm. So I think that, that that's probably my, really deep in my DNA as a, as a filmmaker. And it's not an accident, I think, that yeah. ended up with. Riz? What would I like people to take from this or what would I say? I mean, I think, I think our hope was that we just try and create something with this film that is um, quite distinctive, quite unusual quite different to most of what you might see and I, I believe that we've we've achieved that to some extent um you know at least with just the world that is portrayed on screen i think that we gain a glimpse into a community in a world that we very rarely see um i also think you create a, a kind of soundscape that is very rarely experienced, you know, when you go to watch a movie in terms of how much it puts you in the, in the kind of front seat with the character and, and also um, experienced me with blonde hair. So, <laughs> so all three of those. <laughs> the most, Im the most important. Unique about this film. So go see it, please check yeah. it out and please tell people about it. it. It means a lot to us. And I think if you sit with it, it will, it, it, you know, you connect with it. All right. Well, the, the, the oh, I would just theaters. say too, though, by the way, Please. the one, the hardest thing about it not playing in theaters is to think of people watching it and doing 8 million other things at the same time. Oh yeah. My greatest hope is that people watch it. After the kids go to bed. Just watch the damn thing. Don't yeah. do anything else. Um, that's my hope. You know, watch it. it, whether or not you like it, just commit to it. Good. Awesome. Well, the Three Musketeers of Sound of Metal, you guys are, you guys yeah. are the best. So uh, fun, Clayton. Yeah, thank you so much for uh, joining us today. Enjoy the rest of the Middleburg Film Festival and uh, tell your friends about Sound of Metal. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, Clayton. Thanks. Bye, everyone. guys. Bye, Nicola. Bye, Riz. Bye, Clayton. <laughs>